everyone and welcome to the final video in this series of animating for game engines. In the previous video we looked at how to add animation to the door and then fine tune it to show the principles of animation and add some realism. In this video we're now going to start looking at how to add animation to the handle to really add some more final detail on top and really focus on those principles that we've already talked about. So let's get dive into it. Now the last thing we can do on top of this is add in a handle turn as well, just for a little bit of detail. Uh, let me just go back to my move tool. Now if you want to get rid of your grease pencil ever, um, just go to my annotations. So you've got scene summary here. If I select this, uh, so you've got this all here. So if we click off that, you can see that the annotations are the, uh, the keys there now. So if we just delete these, boom, our grease pencil disappears. <clears throat> nice and easy. All right, so um, yeah, let's go back to this. So for the handle, just get add again. This time we're just gonna press I. Uh, this is insert key, so we're just gonna insert key on rotation for this. Um, and let's just rotate that round because it's going to be holding the handle down to open it so you could probably we could push it all the way or we could push it to here this was a little bit more natural <clears throat> and now we go to again turn off everything other than our z rotation now i don't think no that's right okay, yeah that's fine um Cool, so let's just zoom in again. And then as he pulls the handle down, he probably starts to ease up a little bit until he gets to probably around the end where it'll be back to zero, like that. Um, and again, you can come in and play around with these curves. Um, we've probably actually gone the opposite way there. So if you want more like this and probably want this more like this and again it's that easing into it so it's fast out <clears throat> and easing in that handle now you watch that come round and I think that's probably a little bit too early that it gets to here so let's bring this key over and this one probably there. And let's probably bring this down even. So it's a little bit more here. Again, I'm just dragging keys around randomly. If you lock to the X axis or the Y axis, whatever's up to you. <clears throat> I'm gonna ease out at the beginning there so it's still feels a little bit too smooth. I want to feel like it's more human holding it. So to do that, we could one of the things we could do here is just copy this key over. Um, there's a few ways you can do this. So if I just uh, <clears throat> go to the handle, and again, see, it's just too much information here. We don't want to see everything all at once. Um, let's just turn off over. No. <clears throat> Um, dum, 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 dum. Sync needs to be no, 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 no. Yeah, I mean, this, there are. This is one of the reasons why Blender still ha still has a lot of room to grow. In that, there are some things that are just too much. Um, like hit this. I, as much as I may have keys on these other channels, I don't want to see them. Um. I just want to see what I'm working with. So like all this information, I don't need this. So let's just go to this here. So we just want our rotate Y. Oops, sorry, rotate Z. <clears throat> and again here, if I middle mouse control click, you can zoom in and out, um, but only in width, 
can't zoom in and out down, which is really annoying. That's that. But there is a scroll bar on the side here. So scroll up and down this stupidly long list. Um, <clears throat> or just hide everything and just copy all keys. So we're just going to copy this key. So control C, control V, and ta-da, we've got a key there. And now that handle is being held in place now, which feels a little bit more realistic than that. It would adjust a bit as he holds it and then he'd let go of it at the end. We could probably drag that along a bit more, make that a bit softer um, and make that ease out a bit more there. So it's a little bit more like he's gently letting go of it. And if we add on some more frames, just so you can see that. Cool. And now that's kind of easing in a bit at the end there. But what we could do <clears throat> is we could break this key, go free, and just make that more of a, like it's been let go and is now hitting hard at the end there. So if we just come back. Still a little bit soft. You could probably make that quicker. So it's and bring that in. Let's bring that so it's a little bit more over. See, I'm dragging around too much again. Just like don't forget to lock to axes, makes it much cleaner. Okay, still feeling a little bit soft there at the end. Let's um, just make that feel a little bit harsher. There we go. Now we could also add a bouncing. So again, like the bouncing ball. So let's just go insert a key here. So I um, <clears throat> only select the channel. There we go. And then let's move that along on X. Oh, I've got the wrong thing. No, I don't want the tangent. I want the key, the key. <coughs> let's zoom out, make this more visible. There's the key. All right. Okay, and now we can add in the bounce. Oh. Just trying to make sure that's the same height as that. Let's add another key. So, I on the keyboard, only select the channel. There we go. <clears throat> and now we're going to press Y on the keyboard. To lock it in y axis. <clears throat> and we're going to just add a little bounce here, like this. And also, when you're dragging the tangents, if you hold shift, it makes it easier to not be dragging them so drastically. Because at the moment, I can drag them all quite all over the place. And I want to keep, kind of keep them as locked in as possible. <clears throat> and then grab this tangent, move that like that. At this tangent, let's uh, free that up like that. How many frames does this have now? One, two, one, two, three, four. That's a lot of frames. Um, so we have a bounce such a small one as this. Two frames, one, two. It's probably more than enough. So let's move that over. Can scale that in and that in. Yep. And let's just grab this curve here, make that a little bit less extreme. And then again, just in X, 
So one, two, like that. And let's really zoom in here. I'll probably make that much smaller. Uh, probably about there. Now, one of the things that <clears throat> you saw how I, I did it big and then I mass made that much smaller. <clears throat> one of the things that's always useful is um, to go big so you can see it and then tone down. Um, when it comes to animating, you, talk, you hear me say that a lot, go bigger. Um, you can see I've toned it down way too much now, so you can't even see that little bounce. Um, let's make that bigger. Actually, let's, while we've got this, let's use this as a good opportunity to show how we can scale more than one key. If we hit R on the keyboard, you can rotate them around like this. Um, let's undo that though. If we hit S on the keyboard, we can scale like this. But if we now hit Y with scale, we scale in just one axis, although in the Y axis, yeah. Let's just scale that out. Um, I don't like the fact that this is scaling from the middle point. <clears throat> so uh, there is that to this. Um, if I just take the actual keys rather than their handles, and now hit S. Yeah, there you go. We just want to do this in Y. Let's just bring that there, and then hit G to move down, but only on Y. Okay, now we need to adjust our handles because this, oh, yay, 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 it's like that. <clears throat> okay, let's have a look at that. There you go, you see a little bounce in the handle at the end there. And there we have it. That's how we animate the principles of the bouncing ball into a door and its handle. In future videos, we'll be looking at further animation for game engines, such as animating the mannequin in Blender, and also looking at the other plugins and tools available for animating the mannequin. And then we'll also be looking at things such as the first-person shooter animations as well. If you'd like access to these videos before anyone else, be sure to subscribe to our Patreon, where you'll have exclusive access to videos before anyone else plus access to assets for any, this and any other future projects. A massive thank you to our subscribers, and we'll see you all in the next video. Thank you and goodbye.